buried ancient Roman glass has formed photonic crystals and is an extraordinary discovery, scientists claim. Scientists discovered that ancient Roman glass, known as wow glass, has formed a strange type of crystal that refracts light in surprising ways. Isn't that something? We know that Romans had very strong cement and now they have a, when they found, a, the scientists found that they had very special, astonishing glass. After analyzing archaeological glass fragments from Roman times, scientists realized they were observing naturally formed photonic crystals, periodic optical structures that can control the flow of light. Some 2,000 years ago in ancient Rome, glass vessels carrying wine or water, or perhaps exotic perfumes, tumble from a table in a marketplace and shatter to pieces on the street. And as centuries passed, the fragments were covered by layers of dust and soil and exposed to a continuous cycle of changes in temperature, moisture, and surrounding minerals. Now these tiny pieces of glass are being uncovered from construction sites and archaeological digs and reveal themselves to be something extraordinary. On their surface is a mosaic of iridescent blue, green, and orange colors, with some displaying shimmering gold-colored mirrors. These beautiful glass artifacts are often set in jewelry as pendants or earrings, while larger, more complete objects are displayed in museums. For Fiorenzo Omenetto and Giulia Gudetti, professors of engineering at the Tufts University Silk Lab, and experts in material sciences. What's fascinating is how the molecules in the glass rearranged and recombined with minerals over thousands of years to form what are called photonic crystals, ordered arrangements of atoms that filter and reflect light in very specific ways. Photonic crystals have uh, many applications in modern technology that can be used to create waveguides, optical switches, and other devices for very fast optical communications in computers and over the internet. Since they can be engineered to block certain wavelengths of light while allowing others to pass, they're used in filters, lasers, mirrors, and anti-reflection stealth devices. In a recent study published in the Proceedings of National Academic, uh, Academy of Sciences, PNAS, USA, Omenetto, Gudetti, and collaborators report on the unique atomic and mineral structures that build up from the glass original silicate and mineral constituents modulated by the pH of the surrounding environment and the fluctuating levels of groundwater in the soil. The project started by chance during a visit to the Italian Institute of Technology, IIT, Center for Cultural Heritage Technology. This beautiful sparkling piece of glass, they said, on the shelf attracted our attention, said Omenetto. It was a fragment of Roman glass recovered near the ancient city of Aquila, Italy. Ariana Traviglia, director of the center, said her team referred to it affectionately as the wow glass, and they decided to take a closer look. The researchers soon realized that, they, that what they were looking at was non-fabricational non-fabrication of photonic crystals by nature. It's really remarkable that you have glass that is sitting in the mud for two millennia and you end up with something that is a textbook example of nanophotonic components, said Omenetto. Corrosion and, con and reconstruction. Chemical analysis from the IIT team dated the glass fragment to be the first century before Christ and uh, the first century AD with origins from the sands of Egypt, an indication of global trade at the time. The bulk of the fragment preserved its original dark green color, but on its surface was a millimeter thick patina that had an almost perfect mirror-like gold reflection. Manetto and Giudetti used a new kind of scanning electron microscope that not only reveals the structure of the material, but also provides an elemental analysis. Gudetti said, basically, it's an instrument that can tell you with high resolution what the material is made of and how the elements are put together. They could see that the patina possessed a hierarchical structure made up of highly regular micrometer thick silica layers of altered high and low density, which resemble reflectors known as Bragg stacks, 
Each Bragg stack strongly reflects different relatively narrow wavelengths of light. The vertical stacking of tens of Bragg stacks results in golden mirror appearance of the patina. How did this structure form over time? The researchers suggest a possible mechanism that played out patiently over the centuries. It's like a process of corrosion and reconstruction, said Gudetti. The surrounding clay and rain determined the diffusion of minerals and a cyclical corrosion of the silica in the glass. At the same time, assembly of 100 nanometer thick layers combining the silica and minerals also occurred in cycles. The result is an incredibly ordered arrangement of hundreds of layers of crystalline material. While the age of the glass may be part of its charm, in this case, if we could significantly accelerate the process in the laboratory, we might find a way to grow optic materials rather than manufacture them, Manetto said. The molecular process of decay and reconstruction has some parallels to the city of Rome itself. The ancient Romans had a penchant for creating long-lasting structures, like aqueducts, roads, amphitheaters, and temples. Many of these structures became the foundation of the city's topography, and they are still very strong even today. Over the centuries since, the city has grown in layers, with buildings rising and falling with the changes brought on by wars, social upheavals, and the passage of time. In medieval times, people used materials from broken and abandoned ancient buildings for new construction. In modern times, streets and buildings are often built directly on top of ancient foundations. The crystals grow on the surface of the glass are also a reflection of the changes in conditions that occurred in the grounds as the city evolved, a record of its environmental history, said Udetti. The study was published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, PNAS. And this is written by Jan Bartek, message to Eagle. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.